an hour of rest at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, I am ready to add the specialty malts. This includes the darkly roasted chocolate malts and crystal malts that are crushed and mixed together in a separate bag at the store. These malts will then darken and further sweeten the mash. Near the end of the mash, I heat 5 gallons of sparge water to 170 degrees Fahrenheit for use during the filtering. The sparge is the process of extracting the wart from the mash. At first, the wart will run with many grain particles in it. After a minute or so, the particles in the mash will get stuck in the filter, making the wart run clear. Once it is clear, I pour the cloudy wart back into the tank to be re-filtered. You will notice that the wart will still have some particles, but this is unavoidable at this stage. The filter will run much slower here, so to retain a pressure head in the tank, I add sparge water to the top. This also helps flush out as much sugar as possible. The sparge works using simple gravity and a siphon. The sparge takes a long time and patience, but if done properly, it will produce a clean wart for the boil. Once the sparge is complete, I put aside the buckets of hot wort and I replace the mash tun with the empty boiler. The boiler is identical to the mash tun, but there is no copper manifold installed. Next, I pour the buckets of hot wort into the boiler. The temperature has dropped significantly during the long sparge and so it will take some time to heat the liquid to a boil. After pouring all of the wort into the tank, I top it off with more spring water to bring the volume to about 12 gallons. This will be necessary for achieving 10 gallons of beer at the end of fermentation. I fire up the burner again and the wort is on its way to boiling. While the wort is heating up, we carry the heavy mash tun containing the spent grains to the garden for composting. This is a two-person job. The grains are dumped into a growing pile where they will rot and turn into rich soil that I spread throughout the garden. As you can see, this soil makes our garden very lush and healthy. I spray out the tank to clean the remaining grains. Then I break down the manifold and spray the parts clean. The small parts make it easy to clean the entire manifold quickly with a hose. The parts are put away to dry for the next brew. A lot of magic and worship goes into every brew I make. The complexity of the process leaves much to chance, and so proper respect must be paid to the divine for a great tasting beer. Donnie Cash is on a train! And he's never coming back. Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash, he don't smoke hash. Johnny Cash is on a train, on the line on the track.
Johnny Cash is on a train. Once the boil begins, I will add the bittering hops. But first I must skim the growing foam head off the beer to prevent it from exploding. That's chocolate stout, all right. <laughs> While the beer is boiling, I always like to sample some of the finest beers in the world. This part is fun, and I like to include friends in on the tasting. Today, I've chosen a sampling of many beers of different styles. Nothing is more beautiful than a nicely arranged tasting with many colors and aromas. I love beer.